from Love Healing Hearts. I want to talk to you about getting caught up in abusive relationships and abusive marriages. I'm going to have a little uh, surprise for you tonight. I'm going to play an excerpt from a tape of Yolanda Adams sharing her testimony. And I want to share a few stories with you of my own, of people I was involved with in my life who lived in abusive relationships or abusive marriages. And I want to share with you how, how caught up a woman gets, or a man. And you get so caught up in this thing that you can't figure out, why can't I get out of it? My mind tells me, this is stupid. Why am I putting up with this? I don't have to deal with this. But somehow you choose to stay. Well, I'm not God. I'm not the Holy Spirit. Didn't know that, did you? Yeah. And I don't have the answer for that. But God does. The only supposition I can give to that is it's probably because abusive people are inundated with a spirit of seduction. I'm not talking sexual. A spirit of seduction is something that lures you in and, and entices you and infatuates you. And you get to the point where you can't, you just can't stop thinking about this person. You're, you're consumed with this person, with everything about them. And even if they're ugly, for some reason, you don't see that like everyone else does. So, I just say that to say that when a spirit is involved, a demonic entity is involved in that, that's one of the reasons, not all, one of the reasons why some of you can't seem to let the relationship go. Some of you cannot seem to run out of the door, even though that's exactly what you should do. If you have to stay at a shelter, if you have to take your last hard-earned money and move to another state and go to the police and change identity, whatever you have to do, some of you don't leave because you have bought in to the lie of the spirit of seduction that also seduces you into not believing in yourself any longer. It it. It uh, convinces you that nobody else would want you. You can't live without this person. Oh, come on. But that is a, a lie. It's a lying spirit that works alongside a seduction, a, se a spirit of seduction. Okay, now I'm going to make this quick because I want you to hear this tape. And first I'm going to tell you about a landlady. This was a lady that lived downstairs from me. She was a beautiful woman inside and out. She was married to an ugly man inside and out. They were married 30 some odd years. And that man had beaten her so many times. It was ridiculous. And I refused to get emotional because this woman was a good woman. She was good to this man. She treated him like a king. He treated her like the dirt under his feet. Literally. I was downstairs one day. And she had worked all day long. He had a car. But she had to walk and climb stairs to go back and forth on the buses and the L train in order to get back and forth from work. And every time she was faithful to come home, as tired as she was, varicose veins on every part of her legs, and would stand there and fix her husband a five-course meal. I mean, a feast, baby. And one day she had me down there with her, keeping her company. And he comes home, sits his little ugly self down at that table, and waits for her to serve him. And when she gets through serving him, he tells her to, that she didn't put enough salt on the greens. I, I heard the, 
the um, the hesitation in her voice or the trepidation, whatever you want to call it, mixed with that fear. And But I didn't expect any problems because I'm company. You know, you always put on your best performance in front of company, even if it's a little brat. Well, sure enough, she comes over and she says, I did put greens in the, and I did put salt in the greens, honey. And he said, taste these greens. And he hands her the fork with the greens on it. And when she gets ready to put the fork, the greens to her mouth, he takes the whole plate of this delicious, phenomenal meal she cooked and slams it in her face and begins the beating. And I mean, he beat her from one end of that kitchen to the other till she was crouched between the wall, another uh, appliance, and the refrigerator. She couldn't even get away from him at that point. She was trapped. And he kicked and he punched and he beat. And I'm running upstairs hollering for my father to call the police. Do you know what my father told me? I was mad at him, but I understood later on as I grew older. He told me the reason that he would not call the police is because if the police came, which he had witnessed they had done in the past, she would beg them not to arrest him. And she would beg him to let her stay with him. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I want you to listen to this. Now, I don't understand that. A lot of you don't understand it. But there are some of you in this position. And it hurts my heart to know that you are living a life being a punching bag for no reason. Okay, I'm going to play this tape. And I want you to listen to Yolanda Adams as she shares how God protected her even after he had warned her before marrying the man not to do it. Okay, here we are. I'm going to play it now, and I want you to listen to this testimony. God delivered me from a very abusive marriage. I've been going all over the country expressing real vividly how it happened. I used to be ashamed of my testimony. God showed me one night when I came into the hotel room after I had testified. I was crying, first of all, because of the shame. God said, I allowed you to go through that. First of all, not that it was my will for you, but you chose this man mm. over my will. He said, now, mm. Listen, you guys, please. I kept a protective hedge of fire around you. Simply because I can use you more now than I could have ever used you had you not gone through that in your life and now I go all over the world and I tell people all the time if God speaks listen please first. please ask questions later because if you listen to the voice of the Lord you won't have to deal with what I've dealt with and I hope that through my testimony Anybody in here that's being physically abused, that's being emotionally abused, whether you're a man or a woman, trust me, God does not want you in that situation. <sighs> and
And when I sing songs like Let Thy Will Be Done, it's not a play thing with me. I know what it's like to be outside the will. I know what it's like to feel the presence of the Lord just move away for a moment. The day I walked down the aisle, Listen. when they opened the door, Listen. God told me at the door, don't do it. All that money. I had paid so much money. Mm. The church was filled. The hotel had been paid for. All of that stuff had been paid for. The Lord told me right there at that door, don't do it. When I made that first step, it was as though the Lord said, okay, you chose him over me. Please listen. I stand here tonight having been thrown across the room, having been punched in the face, but let me tell you how good God is. When that man's fist came toward my face, he could not hit me in the face. I know it was nothing but the hand of the Lord that moved that hand over like this because he only grazed the side of my face. And when he picked me up, mm -hmm to throw me onto a marble floor. That's somebody who wants to hurt you. Not a bone was broken. Divine protection. N nothing physically was wrong with me. That's why I know I, I will go to my grave knowing that God keeps angels. Yes. She's getting a little happy right now because she's, she's crying. She's just giving praise to God. But let me tell you, ladies, that doesn't happen for everybody. Some people get wrong, bones broken. I'm going to turn it off now because we know she turned out all right. But let me tell you this. God does not want that for you. He doesn't want you to be a punching bag or, or a doormat. He hasn't chosen you to be that for anybody. Nobody is worth you being treated with such disrespect and such contempt. Nobody's worth that. I don't care if the brother's well hung. I don't care if the man knows how to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. I don't care if he's great in that bed. You can do without that. But listen, you don't need the butt whoopings to get a climax. You don't need a bunch of lies to feed your insecure spirit, to tell you you're wonderful, just for him to turn around and tell you you're nothing. Think about it now. Okay, I'm not going to get emotional and time is running out, so that I'm just going to share that one example about my landlady. She died from internal injuries over 10 days after we moved out here from New York. She died. And that man had the unmitigated gall to fling his little sorry body over the casket and raise all kind of cane, wailing and crying over the woman he murdered in bits and pieces over 30 years. Okay, I'm done. Think about that. Think about what does God want for me? Think, think, convince yourself. I'm better than this. I don't deserve this mess. God bless you.